Okay, so the new player persistence update recently got launched in VRChat, and with it, we now have a way of giving an object to every player without having to use a third party asset. So I'm gonna show you how to do that today. So let's say I had an object, let's give it a cube, and I wanna create a cube for every player. What I would simply do is come down here and go add component and create a VRC player object component. Now if this component installed, it will hide this object and then duplicate it once for every player in the scene. We can see it if I press play. So we can see it gave a cube for our local player. Then also open VRC client sim. We can spawn in a second player and we can see a second cube got made. Awesome. And so now what if you wanted to get the object that your player has? Now, if we want to get our own object, we could simply use a networking local player to get the local player and plug that into a player API get player objects node. And this will get every single object that was duplicated for our player. In our case, there's only one object. And so therefore we can simply use a game object array get node and get the first object. However, if you had multiple, you would instead have to loop through all the objects to find the object that is yours. Some easy ways of doing that would be to use a string contains node with a game object get name, or alternatively, you could look for a particular type of component with a game object get component node. So that's everything in a nutshell, but let's actually make something practical with this to show you how I'd use this in game. So what I wanna do today is I wanna create a flashlight that follows every player's head, and that can be toggled on with the keyboard button T. Obviously this will only really apply to desktop players, but it should be a good showcase of how you can do this. So let's begin. Coming back into our scene, I'm just going to delete the cube that we made because we won't be needing it. I'm going to come over here and first I'm going to create an empty game object and I'm going to call this head follower. I'm then going to create a light spotlight object and this will serve to be the flashlight that the players will see. So we'll be able to just turn it on and off. Now I have some settings earlier that I came up with that I would like to do for this. And with that, we now have our light set up. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is make this object follow the player's head. So I'm actually going to do this on the head follower script. I'm going to go add component and create an udon behavior component. And come down here and I'm just going to right click and go create vhat udon udon graph program asset. And I'm going to call this player head torch follower. And then I'm going to open up the udon graph. Now in the udon graph, I'm just going to come to the variables tab and I'm going to create a player API variable. And I'm going to call this target player. This will be the player that the object follows. Then I'm also going to create a light variable. And I'm going to call this target light. This will be the light component that we enable and disable. I'm also going to make it public so we have to see it inside the inspector. Awesome, so now that we have our variables, we first need to know what player we are going to follow. So when the object spawns in, it'll play the event on enable. Note for some reason, this event is not under the event category. Thanks VRChat. So whenever this event is called, we need to get the player that it is following. And to get that, I'm going to use a networking get owner node to get the current owner of the object. Then I'm just gonna grab our target player and set it to be that value whenever the object gets turned on. Now another thing I'm gonna do is just go event on owner transferred. That will play whenever the owner changes. I don't know if this is needed. I don't know if it's needed in the future. This is more of just a stopgap measure. Theoretically, this object should only ever be owned by one player and get deleted when that player leaves the instance. However, on the odd chance that that's not the case, I'm leaving it in here. Okay, so now we need to make this object follow the player's head. And to do that, we're going to grab our target player. We're going to use a player API get tracking data. Make sure it's set to the head of the player. And then we're going to use a player API tracking data get position node and a player API tracking data get rotation node. And now we have the position and rotation of the player's head. We now need to update this object to be in that location. And we want this to happen on event post late update. And we're going to use a transform set position and rotation node to change the position of this object. Awesome, so now when this object spawns in or the ownership transfers, they'll update the target player variable to be the owner of the object. Then every frame, it will grab our player's head's position and rotation and set our object to be in that same location. Awesome, so if we stop full screening, we can come back into our scene, we can select our head follower and give it the new script. We can put the light in our light variable that we're not currently using. And then lastly, we can go add component and we want to create a VRC player object component. So now when we hit play, we can see that our head follower object got disabled and our new one is following the player and can look around the scene. And if we were to use client sim and spawn in a second player, we can see that it too has its own light that is following around that player. Awesome. Okay, but how can we make the light toggle on and off? Well, to do that, we first need to check if we the local player and we also need to share whether or not the light is on or off via Udon. So coming back into the graph, we need two more variables. First of all, we need a bool to say if the light is on or off, and we need to sync that value. Then when the object gets spawned in, 
we need to update this value to be whether or not the light is currently on or off. And we can do that by grabbing our light variable and then putting it through a light get enabled node and plugging that into a set is on node. So now when the object spawns in, it'll set our is on bool depending on whether or not the light is turned on or off. Now, as we probably should use manual sync for this, I'm also gonna add an udon behavior request serialization node to the end of it. This will just tell the network that the variable has changed, which will tell everyone to change it immediately. Now, the next thing we need to do is check whether or not we have pressed T on our keyboard. However, as every object will be checking this, we need to make sure that we're the current owner of the object. Now, to do this, we could check whether or not we're the owner every single frame, but because that will never really change, it's probably best to store whether or not we can or not, instead of doing the same checks every single frame. So in order to store whether or not we are the current owner, I'm just gonna create another bool variable and I'm just gonna call this is owner. Then I'm just gonna use a networking is owner node and set whether or not we're the owner when the object gets spawned in. So now we can grab this bool and use a branch node. And if we are the owner, we need to check whether or not we've pressed the letter T. So for that, I'm gonna use the input get key down node alongside another branch node. And I'm gonna check for the key T. And so now if we're the owner and the letter T has been pressed down this frame, we want to get it to switch the is on bool. So for that, I'm going to grab our bool, put it for an unary negation node to flip it. Don't ask me why it's called that. And now we need to turn on or off the light, but everyone needs to turn on and off the light. So I'm going to select send change as well as put another request serialization node to tell everyone else that we've changed the bool. And then I'm going to drag and drop our bool while holding down alt to get a variable that will get called whenever this variable changes. Be aware that send change has to be enabled, otherwise the local player won't play this event. Now all we need to do is grab our light and put it through a light set enabled node and set our light to be on or off to whatever the new value is. So in summary, when the object spawns in, it'll grab our owner and set that as the target player. It will then check to see whether or not the light is on and update is on to be that value. And then finally, it'll check to see whether or not we are the current owner of this object. Then every frame, it will grab the target player, grab its head position and rotation and set our object to be in that same location. Then it will check our variable to see whether or not we are the owner. And if we are the owner, it will check to see whether or not we have pressed the letter T this frame. And if we has, it will flip the is on variable. Whenever anyone sees the is on change get played, it will set our light to be on or off, depending on whether or not the is on ball is true or false. So that should be all the nodes that we need. Now it's time to test this. Now if you haven't already, make sure you put your target light into the public variable slot, and then we can hit play. Now we should see our light be on, and we can press T to toggle it on and off. And because only desktop players can turn it on and off, we probably don't want the light to be on by default. So if I disable it, if we now hit play, we should now see that it starts off, but can still be toggled on and off with the letter T. Now something I do want to mention is that you might notice that it keeps filling up our inspector. If we want all our head follow objects to be under the same place, we can simply create a parent object. And now all these new objects will be a child of this object. Okay, so let's just play test this with multiple players to test out the networking. And now that we're in the world, we can see that when I press T, it should turn on for both players. And the other player should be able to turn on their own light. And now both players have their own personal light. Awesome. So then the last thing I want to do is what if we wanted to manually toggle this on with a button in the world? So now in order to do that, we've got a head follower object. And what if we want to access this with a simple button in the world that we can toggle to toggle on and off our torch? Not very practical, but this will show you how you can get that object. So we can simply go into our Udon graph and I'm gonna create an event to that will just toggle this on and off real quickly. So I'm just gonna create a custom event and I'm gonna call this toggle torch. And then I simply wanna grab this bit of logic and paste it here. So now whenever someone calls this custom event, it will toggle on and off our torch. So what if I wanted to create a button that will find our head follower object and call this event? Well, simply to do that, I would come over here. I want to create a cube and I'm going to call this torch toggle button. I'm going to come in here and go add component and create an udon behavior component. I'm going to come down here, just go create vh8 udon udon graph program asset. I want to call this toggle torch on and open up the udon graph. So now I want to use an event interact node and I want to get the local player's torch object. So I'm going to use a player up a get player's objects. And I want to use a newer king local player. So now I need to find this udon behavior with this event on it. So now I'm going to assume you have multiple objects like this. So I'm going to select and go shift F to create a for loop. Though you could do it manually. And then we need to check whether or not this game object has a player head torch follower on it. Now in udon sharp you can just call the event. But for this I'm actually going to look for the name. So I'm just going to copy head follower 
and use a string constant node. And I'm going to check to see whether or not this game object's name contains head follower. So I'm going to use a game object, get name node, and a string contains node, switch it to string. And I'm going to check to see whether or not this object contains head follower on it. I'm then going to use a branch node. And if it does contain this, I want to then get the udon behavior from it. So I'm going to use a game object get component node, switch it to type, use a VRC type udon behavior, get the game object, and do an udon behavior send custom event node, get our event, and paste that in. So now this is a little complicated, a bit more for my advanced users. But whenever we click this object, it will grab the local player, get all the local player's objects, and then go for each of them, trying to follow the one that has head follower in its name. Then if this object does have that, it will get the udon behavior that is on that object, and tell it to play the custom event toggle torch. So if I hit compile and come back into our scene, and I was just to give our button our new script that we wrote, I'm just going to put it over here to make it somewhat out of the way and hit play. We should see that we can come over to the object, click it, and it will find our object and play the event that will turn on and off the torch. Awesome! So hopefully you found this video helpful. Feel free to leave a like on the video if you liked it, leave a comment down below if you any questions, and feel free to check out some of the other tutorials that I have on the channel. I also have links to my Patreon and Discord down below. But until next time, bye!